Uh, we just want to prove ourselves. I mean, we're going at each other every day, just get each other better. It's a, it's a mix between basketball and football out there. I mean, some of the drills we do, we're just, we're just going at each other's necks all the time. So, I mean, it's building up, like, strength and stuff, and we're just going at it every day. Keep hearing stories of, about the weight room and how tough it is, but how much you guys enjoy it. What, what, what do you enjoy about these physical weight room sessions you're going through? It's intense in there, but I mean, it's fun too. He, he, he's after you, he's trying to get you better. So I mean, at the end of the day, he's there for you. He's not trying to hurt you or anything. We might not enjoy it while we're doing it, but when you get done with it, it's just the fact that you completed the object as a team and you're getting through it, it just makes it even much better. You're a big man. You've got a head coach who is a great big man at the college level and had a pro career as well, NBA draft pick. Um, what have you learned from Coach Anderson already, and what else do you maybe hope to learn down the line? He's just giving me tips on how to be a better big man, because uh, most coaches are guard more oriented, oriented and stuff. So just to have a coach that works with big men helps a lot like, to develop ourselves. What kind of a, a toughness do you develop, even as a high school player? When you're on a successful team, you help a team win and you have those postseason runs, playing those high stakes games. I'm used to being there, of course. Um, and it's been four long years, you know, getting there and getting my body like that. So to come here, I mean, I just want to bring that from high school to college and just bring some wins here too. SEC. It's up there with like the Big Ten and ACC. Everyone wants to get here, and this, this is my dream to play in the big league, so I'm, I'm here now. I feel like my toughness really helps out. I you know I'm scrappy, get on the floor, you know, defend anyone. I'm not afraid of anyone, so I feel like I can bring that to the table. There was a player here not too long ago by the name of Jason Sutherland. Look at this kid. He leads this conference in floor burns. That name been that brought up to you? Oh yeah, it definitely has. I'm always on the floor diving, getting the loose balls. You know, if someone's you know scoring a lot of points, I'll get up on them and I'll bother them. You know, get in people's heads, whatever I got to do. You do bring a certain amount of experience coming from the junior college ranks, and this is a, a, a young team. What do you try to tell these younger kids about what it's like, you know, battling in college basketball day in and day out? Well, it's definitely different um, than the high school level. You don't get the calls that you get, especially being, you know, underclassmen, freshmen, and sophomore. We're not going to get the calls that the seniors get. So you've got to play through this, and you just got to be tough, you know. These off-season workouts are tough, uh, you know. How, how have you adapted to the, uh, the level of physicalness that you see in practice? I mean, we just got to bring it every day. We know what the goal is. The goal is to win, you know, do everything we can. So it's all about the process. I'm hard-nosed, you know. Whatever I got to do to win, I'm going to go out there and do it. If I'm cheering from the bench, I'm going to cheer from the bench. If I'm out there playing, I'm going to be on the floor diving, doing whatever I have to do. The past several months, it's been hard to find Mizzou assistant coach Brad Luce without a phone to his ear. Planning a trip for an entire basketball team to Italy will do that. You know, just getting our, our guys prepared to travel, making sure they have passports, making sure we have insurance, um, you know, dealing with per diem, think, you know, the, the, the details of the trip to make sure everybody's ready to go. Terrence Phillips is ready to go. He actually lived in Italy for a year when he was 12. Accompanying his older brother, NBA star Brandon Jennings, while Brandon played a year of pro ball in Italy back in 2009. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> uh, hi, beautiful. How you doing? <laughs> Phillips picked up more than a little useful Italian during his year abroad. He developed a love for the country and the culture, something he hopes his Tiger teammates share with him after this trip. Getting that chemistry, you know, it's already great now, but even going overseas, you know, learning, learning different culture, different lifestyle, and history of, uh, history of Italy and things like that, I think this is going to be a very fun trip and a very exciting trip for us. This is about basketball, um, but it, it's also about uh, an educational opportunity for these guys to go overseas and see some things that they may never see in their lifetime. You know, we're going to the Vatican, we're going to the Colosseum in Rome, we're going to Venice, we're going to go to Florence, we're going to be at Lake Como. I mean, that's stuff some people never get to see their whole life. And this trip is actually a homecoming of sorts for Kim Anderson. He played two years in Italy, 
and will actually get a chance to go back to the town he began his professional career in back in 1977. We're going to go back to where we, we lived for two years, in two separate places. Uh, we're probably eating that restaurant we used to eat all the time. And uh, uh, I'm sure there's a new gym by now because the gym wasn't very nice when I was there. And on top of all that, there's the work on the court. The Tigers got 10 practices to prepare for Italy, time together during the summer they wouldn't ordinarily have. The opportunity to, to, to put your offense in and work on your defense and experiment while you're there. You know, I told the guys at practice the other day that, you know, when we get there, we will be ready to play a game. And that's a basketball experience that can't be matched. To go along with the cultural thrill they'll also get from the trip of a lifetime. I'm Ben Arnett for the Mizzou Network. One, two, three. Ben. Exciting dunk contest. Here's Jordan Barnett with the winning slam. Perfect tens oh! from all around. Oh! Jordan Barnett! Up and over Super Truman! The night wrapped up with a Mizzou hoop scrimmage. It was the first chance for fans to see the 2016-17 squad in action. Terrence. Team Black got on the board first with the help from some familiar faces, but freshman Frankie Hughes answered back with a huge triple to put up the first numbers for the gold team. Junior transfer Jordan Barnett, who will be eligible to play in the second half of the season, had two three-pointers back-to-back to also help out Team Gold. But it was Team Black on top, 26-12, heading into the second half. Trying to cut the lead, Frankie Hughes ended up putting up a total of eight points for Team Gold, but it was Reed Nico with the biggest play of the half, a two-handed slam. The final score, Team Black 35, Team Gold 22. What type of a player do you, do you feel like you were? Because you were so popular amongst the fan base here, and the fans still love you. Uh, I still love the fans, but um, I just was a guy that went and laid it out on the line every night. Um, I felt I was just one of those guys you could depend on, and you knew that would, would come, come, come through for the team. Uh, you know, whether we were down 20 or up 20, I was going to leave it all on the floor. And, if, if I had a chance to try to win the games for us, I would. Um, I think that my class, well, I'm sure of my class, you know, we finished the most wins in school history. So I want to be, you know, one of those guys that's just remembered as a winner and just left it on the line for the university. You mentioned your class and, and your senior year and that, uh, that team. I know everybody loved you guys because you won so many games and, and a Big 12 championship, but at the same time, there was a, a strong you know, love for you guys before that season even, even played out. Why, why were you guys so closely connected to the fan base and especially the students that, that, uh, that you were playing for? Well, I felt just coming in as a freshman, we kind of changed the culture of the, the basketball program. Uh, we kind of, we did things the right way. You know, uh, a lot of the guys were coming in working hard and I felt the fans appreciated the fact that we earned what we were doing on the floor. They, they seen a lot of things that they didn't like with the program and we came in and we made an effort to try to change that. And I think that we did a, did a good job with it. And of course, when you're winning games on top of that, everything else just kind of blends together. You know, you, you didn't talk a whole lot on, on the court as, as we, were, we were just talking about, but I can remember um, as the confetti was falling in the Sprint Center and everyone was putting on the hats, uh, I saw you and, and uh, I still have the, the shot of it. I, I got caught you with an, an ear to ear smile. Can, can you remember what, what the feeling was like in your hometown winning that game and how you felt? Yeah, that feeling right there, it just, it just was really amazing to, to be able to come in with, with guys that I fought for four years with and the last Big 12 championship for us uh, there in Kansas City, my hometown in the Sprint Center. And just to you know, see the confetti, see the, the the smiles on the rest of my teammates and coaches' face, it you know that that that's a feeling that you can't, no one can take it away from you. You know, we that was something that we earned, and I think it was really important for us to to finish the Big 12 tournament like that and uh, do it in front of my home crowd and in Missouri. You know, it just was important for us. That last game in Missouri Arena against Kansas. And I'm sure you get asked about this all the time, but I'll be the next one. Those last few minutes when you put the team on your back, what was going through your mind as you were making those shots, making those plays, and, and, and bringing the team back to a win? I was looking at the faces on my teammates and the faces on all the, the crowd. I could just, 
it's a million things that played through my mind. I, I remember just seeing the fans out camping before the game, the night before the game, and you know, seeing my teammates and understanding how much it meant for us to to win that last game at home for for the team, for the fans, and uh, we took it one game at a time. But we also understood how important that game was, and I just seen a few opportunities I had and took it took advantage of it the best way I knew how. I think it was the shot that put Kansas up 12 or, or something like that right before you went on your run. Thomas Robinson hits a fadeaway baseline jumper and runs by the announce table and shouts, I'm a bad man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I'm a competitor, so I'm not going to let anybody, especially on the court, I'm not going to let anybody say anything out of line to me or to my teammates. And I felt that, you know, when you, when you hear people trash talking, I, I was getting a little trash talk going on that game as well. But um, you, you just have to make someone pay for it, and that, that was my mindset. Did you at any point say, give me the ball, I, I, I want to do this? I think uh, that team, we definitely shared the ball, but uh, I, I like to take it on myself. You know, when we had those clutch moments or when we, we would need something going down at the end of the game, I always wanted the ball or I always wanted to take the shot or make the play, whether it was on defense. Whatever we had to do, I always wanted to take that initiative and make the play in. As a leader on that team, a lot of my teammates also, you know, were looking for me. They always would try to look for me in those type of situations. We're talking about so many great memories. I know, you know, you had some rough times off the court during, during your, your uh, how, how much did having the, the family here at Mizzou, especially you talk about that senior class, those guys that you spent all four years here, how much did that Mizzou family help you through some of those tough times? Sometimes when, when you're away at school or in a different situation where that's not home and that's not family, you don't have anyone that you can lean, lean on or you don't have anyone that can help you get through those tough situations. But uh, from the moment I came to Mizzou, the fans, you know, the university, my teammates, they always backed me and uh, they, they made it a lot easier for me. To, my college process was my best four years of my life. And, I love the university and it, it was something that helped me become the person I am today. The 2016-2017 Tigers are one of the youngest teams in college basketball. The Tigers have three hardworking walk-ons, including newcomers Brett Rao and Trevor Glassman. Sophomore Adam Wolf is back for his second season in the black and gold. Wolf saw seven games of action as a freshman and even showed some scoring ability. The six foot seven inch forward from Wisconsin piled up six points in only five minutes in Mizzou's blowout win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Kim Anderson's second straight full recruiting class is stocked with four freshmen, starting with Jacoby Kemp. The six foot nine inch, 215 pound forward from Layton, Utah. Kemp averaged 12 points and six rebounds a game in high school, leading his team to a state championship. He may redshirt this season to develop, but the Tigers see promise in his length and athletic ability. Reed Nicko's Tiger career is off to a solid start. The Minnesota native had corrective hip surgery in the offseason and made an instant impact when healthy. Throwing down some thunderous dunks and scoring 10 points against Davidson, an ankle injury slowed Nicko, but the 6'10", 250-pounder is a classic big man with vast potential. Another post presence, Mitchell Smith, caught the attention of Tiger fans in Mizzou's early season win over Northwestern State when he ran the floor and flashed outstanding athletic ability. Long and lean, Smith set numerous career records in high school in Van Buren, Arkansas, including scoring, rebounding, blocks, and double-doubles for a career. The Cleveland Connection wasted little time showing off their timing as Frankie Hughes and Willie Jackson alley-ooped their way into Tiger fans' hearts in the season-opening win over Alabama A&M. The two were childhood friends and teammates. Jackson committed to Missouri first, a bruiser at 6'6", 212 pounds. He scored plenty in high school, averaging 21 points per game. But his rebounding has earned him minutes early in his Mizzou career. He hauled in nine boards in his college debut and is always around the glass. It's easy to see why Jackson averaged a double-double in high school, playing alongside Frankie Hughes. Hughes was a late addition to Mizzou's 2016 freshman class, a blue-chip scorer who averaged nearly 20 points a game. He was a first-team All-Stater in Ohio and brings plenty of offensive punch to the Tigers. Athletic with shooting range, Hughes has shown an ability to fill it up when he's on. He tied Steve Stepanovich's freshman debut scoring record with 23 points in the season opener and followed that up with 24 points against a nationally ranked Xavier team. Competitive and fiery, Hughes has also shown an ability to get hot from three-point land. 
Jordan Geist is another newcomer, but as a junior college transfer, he's a sophomore. Geist averaged nearly 15 points a game as a freshman at Ranger College, playing for Billy Gillespie. He's tough. He's feisty. He reminds head coach Kim Anderson of Jason Sutherland. He provides depth off the bench as the backup point guard to Terrence Phillips. The entire sophomore class is back after a learn-on-the-fly freshman campaign. Cullen Van Leer broke into the starting lineup to begin his sophomore season. The sharpshooter from Pacific, Missouri, is the son of a longtime high school coach, and it shows. Focused as much as ever on defense, Van Leer is rounding into an all-around player. His 10.5 rebound effort early in the season against Northwestern State was a sign of that, and he can still knock down threes with the best of them when his shot is falling. K.J. Walton has sparked Mizzou off the bench early in his second season. Walton had a typical up-and-down freshman campaign, but worked hard in the weight room in the offseason to get stronger. Playing at 200 pounds this year, he's having more success driving the basket and finishing through contact. His 20 points against Tulane nearly single-handedly lift the Tigers to a win over the Green Wave. Terrence Phillips was a young leader a year ago, starting every game of his freshman season at point guard. An energetic player, his game is pass first. His 107 assists as a freshman marked the third best passing season by a newcomer in Tiger history. But he's also shown the ability to score when needed and can get hot from the outside. Leadership could be his best attribute. Phillips took command of the offense from his first day in a Tiger uniform and continues to lead on and off the court as a sophomore. Kevin Perrier was named to the SEC's all-freshman team after a solid first season at Missouri. Averaging 11 points and nearly 5 rebounds per game, Perrier shot 46% from the floor as a freshman. He's expanding his range this year and already has a double-double to his name against a top-10 team, and his rebounding numbers are up by nearly two boards a game early in his sophomore campaign. The Tigers have just one scholarship junior and one scholarship senior. Jordan Barnett is newly eligible after transferring from Texas and sitting out for the past year. A St. Louis native, he once won a state championship inside Mizzou Arena with a 43-point, 22-rebound performance. He hopes to bring scoring to the Tigers, and his athletic ability translates well to the transition opportunities that Mizzou loves to create. Russell Woods is Mizzou's only senior. The Juco transfer from Chicago has been consistent when healthy. He earned six starts during his first season in a Tiger uniform and has been an efficient offensive player, scoring 52% from the field as a junior and improving as a senior. He shot better than 60% early this season, and his 10-rebound effort against Tulane was key in that critical early season win over the Green Wave. Mizzou Arena, it's SEC basketball on the SEC Network. Tonight's exhibition game features the Mules of Central Missouri and the Missouri Tigers. And it's picked off by Hughes. Hughes with a quick two-on-two. We'll give it up to Phillips for the layup. Good pass from the freshman Frankie Hughes. There's an offensive rebound by Jackson. He puts it back up and in. And there he is again, and the left hand will go off the window. And the Mules are struggling from the field. Here's Van Leer. Puts it off the glass and in. Tough shot by Van Leer. Mules try to go inside, and that one won't go again. And here's a steal by Jackson. Jackson has Geist. He'll give it to him. Lays it up and in. And watching. That's right. Watching Frankie Hughes go baseline and then go up and under. Nickel inside to Phillips. Phillips puts it up and in. Yeah, and right there, Kim Anderson wanted to bring the ball out, run a possession, run a set, get an open look, and how about a three-point shot for Colin Van Leer. Great offensive possession. There's a three ball put up and in by Hughes. And Frankie Hughes knocks down a three. A good start for the black and gold. Hurrier, he'll get it to Phillips. Phillips drives, lays it off the glass and in. He's out there with Hughes. Hughes got a step off the bounce, knocks it down. He's going to be a special player right there. Jackson off the window, and he'll score. Oh, good dump down pass from Hughes to Nickel, who puts it down to him. That's what I'm talking about with the vision from Frankie Hughes. To Geist for three. Got it. It's easy to get confident about scoring the basketball, but it's going to be about what you're doing defensively. And there's Jordan Geist, one of the newcomers, knocking it down from the top of the key. Woods makes his way into the lane and finishes with the left hand. Mizzou up. 54-46, well, and three more. Frankie Hughes knocks down a three. And Frankie Hughes, it, you've been saying it all night. Frankie Hughes has been outstanding tonight. Right there, one dribble, three-point shot. And that one won't go. Rebound to Phillips. 
And Phillips ahead to Hughes, and Hughes will throw it down with the right hand thunder. Missouri's going to get an exhibition. Final SEC team to tip their regular season schedule as they welcome in the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M. Matt's yeah, it's hard to get younger every year, but they seem to do that. And this year, the freshman that we're going to watch closely, Frankie Hughes, outstanding player, out of Cleveland, shoots it, great athlete, attacks the rim in their exhibition victory against Central Missouri. Tigers in their white trimmed and missed most of the basketball season. So you're right, good to see him back. Van Leer for three. Shoot. Shot only 27% behind the arc last year. They now make him take some time off the shot clock. Per year. Gives Missouri a three-point lead. Kim Anderson likes per year. Per year on the drive. Misses the left-handed layup, but tipped in by the aforementioned Frankie Hughes. This is a good night for Missouri to get it started with an opponent like Alabama A&M. Kim Anderson, the head coach, third seed. Woods at the line, hits the free throw. Go. Uh, three of the seven top scores are back. Courier, sophomore, Phillips, a sophomore, K.J. Walton, a sophomore. Gone are, are names that we you see last year score. A Wes Clark, a Eamon Wright, uh, Ryan Rossberg would seem to have been around. The only. But it will be a challenge because there isn't senior leadership. There aren't the guys that have been around. And make it four in a row. You love to see progression. You love to stand similar to where the defenders stand. Drag the ball over, get between two defenders, and uh, then there you can see what range this young man has. Movement, body movement, find openings. And if you're a shooter against a zone, you just kind of want to stay moving, and, and hopefully the ball is kind of the glue of the team. Knows the offense, runs the defense. KJ Walton with the following layup. 12 point lead part, but uh, he's going to like a night like tonight because so far missed shots and he can clean up the boards. His first game as a freshman a year ago against Wofford, he had 20 points and five rebounds to start his career as Missouri Tigers. So far in his first half, seven rebounds, a lot of misses, and he's the most aggressive and the quickest off the floor. You watch the zone defense, and offensively, you never want to match up man to man. Good, great, good stuff. You're going to want to watch this kid, Reed Nico. He's a freshman. Jordan Geist had 11. Uh, a good feeling amongst them, even in an exhibition game, because it's still a disappointing winning locker room we've ever seen. Willie Jackson with the layup. Willie Jackson's the other kid out of Cleveland's Garfield Heights to go along with 212, and he's active, he's quick. And this is what uh, the coaching staff wants him to do. Shoot the gaps defensively, get steals, attack on the basket. Another guy, though, that they like in the fact he doesn't hesitate. I mean, he's going to take it and go and make a, and try to make a play. Back out to Geis. Courier gets it back and muscles it in. Rebound for Jackson. Nice pass. Geis with 25 on the shot clock and he nails it. Finally, guys, you got it. I got some time on the clock. Tigers in transition. The rhythm three knocks it down, and the Tigers have a 21-point lead. And they play host to Tennessee Tech at home. That's their only non-conference home game. Uh, Southwestern Athletic Conference, the SWAC, they're projected to finish sixth. Texas Southern, another good. As Jackson streaking in the middle, Van Leer instead on the wing. Another three-pointer for Cullen. Van Leer, it's his third. Aren't you? Well, I, well sure. Yeah. I, I mean, you're wide open. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to see that streak. Yeah. Giving up something for yourself, for a teammate, all of a sudden that becomes contagious. Now he'll take that three. Jackson, the high rebound, and put in. That was some kind of leap there by Willie Jackson. Drops it back and back to Willie Jackson. That's Garfield Heights highlights right there. Jackson to Hughes. The high school tandem making it work here against Alabama. Hughes, Willie Jackson, and uh, Jackson had an easy one. Give it to his teammate, give it right back. Easy start. Without Phillips, he's two Anderson trying to find out, okay, who handles the basketball for us when Phillips goes out. Woods the rebound and the hook back. Hughes, bucket. That's pretty smooth. Went back to Manhattan. at Mizzou Arena. And what a crazy day in uh, college football. Holy right? smokes. We can't wait till Tuesday night. Three and Michigan will be that number four. Team. That's you, just you, my You think they'll sit right there? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that they don't have a whole lot of bound and finally gets out of there. Nice play. Gets it back. Oh, wow. And one. 
What a pass. At any time. And they expect him to produce some big numbers in his career here in Como. Uh, you watch the stroke. He, uh, he looks like he's cotton. cotton. At the horn, Phillips. Oh, my goodness, oh. off the foot of the rim. <laughs> what a way to finish the half. 49-20 for Missouri. Tigers shot 57% from the floor. Alabama a Arinoka and Booger McFarland catch you up on yesterday's football action in the SEC. A big win for Georgia over Auburn. And they're going to break down that race in the East. Halftime here in I, they were fun to watch in the first 20 minutes, I know that. Woods now has 12. That's nice. He's anticipating that they're going to get some play in time tonight. So Perrier hits the second of the two. He's yet to score an 0 of 4 shooting. Had 14 the other night. And that's huge. Straight in the three. Yeah. Not just one or two players their size, but five and six and seven players their size. Hughes, another three-pointer. He's got a sweet stroke. Yeah, the stroke is uh, basketball, and Hughes just simply steps into the shot and strokes it. Yeah, and Hughes, they knew they had a big task in front of them tonight. Hughes, another three. Oh, my goodness. Lighten it up. Frank Heights. And watch him move. He moves away from the ball, and he steps into the shot, ready to go. Money. You had to Hughes, and Hughes at the jam. To score again if he gets an opportunity. Phillips beats Cotton to the hole. Third shooter, one that's in real. Watch the quick quickness of the release. Now he knows he's on. Flat out, Frankie Hughes is on a roll, shooting it. And this finish, he'll probably grade himself a four out of ten on the gun. Kind of shook his head like he eh, mistimed a little bit, but it's terrific when he, when he hurt the hip. And one of the iconic. Commercial slogans of all time. We talk leadership, and it's off the court. He's done some great things, and it's on the court. And as a lead guard within any system, you ball. Phillips is pretty good at all those things. Drops it back for Nico to the corner, and Hughes. Bang! Huh. Four three-pointers for the first. Anytime you push, now I didn't like this pass here from Phillips because the big player Nico can't, can't handle it there. But a smart pass, skip it right there to Hughes. Smart play. But that's the kind where a point guard has to know who's running the court. The big guy doesn't need it at the top of the key on the desk. Van Leer gets it ahead. Mitchell Smith, and one! Mitchell Smith with his first collegiate bucket, and it's a highlight bucket. You know what you like is his aggressiveness once he caught it here, he had one thing in mind, and he was going to the rim. Now you draw contact, now you draw the bump, and you're strong enough, even with that thin frame, and you're aware enough to take, put your eyes up on that really kid that could both play point also. Hughes, oh my goodness, 24 for Frankie Hughes. He's hit five. And a kid out of Cleveland, I'm sure Xavier knew quite well. Yep, Smith puts it in. Good hustle. We're going to have to dig into the record books to find out when's the last time. 72 points against Chicago State in 1995 and McMurray in 19... Stuffed him ahead to Walton. Walton cranks it, and he got his shot blocked by Petty, but in the follow. And Lear, the only guy that started on the floor right now for the Tigers. Geist with the drive and the bucket. It's his second of the night. Nice body. K.J. Walton driving on Wiltshire, driving the first lap. Whoa, what a chance. Willie Jackson came flying out of nowhere on the ball that was. Center top ten nominee here. The unintended alley-oop. Long outlet to Walton. Walton lays it in. K.J. Walton. On the wing. Van Leer passes up the three. Walton off glass. And the story only gets better. John, uh, Jordan Barnett, transfer from Texas, kid from St. Louis.
Uh, he'll be eligible December 17th when we're back here for the SEC Network game against Eastern Illinois. Yeah, I saw him play in high school. A great town. VMI on a transfer was a terrific player for Quinn Snyder. Frank Haith had Jabari Brown from Oregon. Crease when they're not playing as well and is not efficient, as he's efficient as he should be. KJ Walton with an efficient drive to the hoop. Three personal fouls, two turnovers. And Nico banks in the free throw. Gives him three on this. Kim Anderson's getting a little bit deeper into his bench here in the final five minutes. Well, a good hand for uh, Walton as he came out and Will took a look at him. Obviously, freshman at Kentucky. Monk is terrific. Fox is terrific. Uh, bam out of box. Then that's the squad, and or those are the squads that finish second, third, first, and can make the NCAA run. Mitchell Smith with the basket. The entire night, Frankie Hughes has been a big story for the Tigers in his first game on the Mizzou floor. So think of this, Matt. We have seen, we got to see tonight, Frankie Hughes catch and release, right? We've seen him put it on the floor, finish easily at the rim in different possessions. We've seen him defensively make some steals. Again, in a way that he felt comfortable about not that it was out of his comfort zone. That's what I like. And, and, and my former teammate that came in, the nice part about it is when you get doubled or things happen, you, you, you learn how to use your teammates. Three walk-ons now on the floor for Missouri. That was Nico with the basket, but uh, Rao, Glassman, and... And that will do it. 99-44. Big season opener for Kim Anderson's team, and I know the crowd here at Mizzou excited to see the game that Frankie Hughes had and his former high school teammate Willie Jackson who had 11 and a sports center. Have fun, get ready to travel to Orlando. Frankie Hughes goes for 23 for three pointers. Russell Woods had a new career high with 12. And Willie Jackson, 11 and 9 tonight. Final score, 99-44, Missouri wins in a row. Now for John Sunbold, our entire... Orlando, the Xavier Musketeers, 11th in the nation. They'll take on the Missouri Tigers. As we start already earlier this morning here in this beautiful facility at this time overall. But for Anderson, Corey, a complete rebuild of this team. And it's also a team that starts this game at a distinct height disadvantage got that taste in their mouths of losing too early in the NCAA tournament as far as they were concerned oh what a shot this is one above the rim where Missouri is actually getting shots blocked up and under the bucket and the foul O'Mara says hey I stayed bird nice fake and a beautiful shot in the matchup you highlighted earlier in the game some talent well, you've got a couple guys on the Xavier roster right now who are considered to be possible early entries into the draft. He kept his pivot foot and he scores. And Jackson showing a nice little touch around. Great team defense by Hughes, not giving up on the play when he got beat. Help the guy that helped. And a three-pointer. The puppies bite. Every day coming out, not taking these games for granted. Jalen Reynolds now playing for Reconati in Italy, and James Farr, his compadre just convinced him, why don't you come to Missouri with me? And there they are. Two teams got together last year. Kevin had 12 points against Xavier. So, you know, for the sophomores, when you all 31 games last year for Missouri. So, you know, experience is the greatest teacher, and that's exactly what they got. His previous trip. Sunday at 5.30 Eastern, we've got the back and watch ESPN. And you have to love the way that Gino Ariema takes his team out on the road to get tested early. And, you know. Hook shot. Like per year. And a nice putback. Off and a second chance by Russell Woods. Now, I can tell you there are a number of things. 11th in the country. And, you know, with the success that they've had over the previous years, about at the open, the difference between the point guard play and with the, the influence that Terrence Phillips has on his team compared to Edmund Sumner, and right now. And they play the 1-3-1 zone. Makura wants to be at the point of that. Per year with a three. What a... You don't have a choice but to get better or quit. 
And those are the only two options. Oh, again, a beautiful shot by Phillips. A little break, and my partner here said, you know, we only have a minute and 15 before we have to do something here. And I looked at the clock, and he goes, clock management, you can be a point guard in life, like Corey, and I think like Terrence will be for the rest of his life. Some people are born that way. Extra class right there. Oh, what a move by Phillips. That's nice. Ooh. That is nice. Terrence Phillips. Get it in the ball. If there had been no trip, that ball would have gone directly into the hands of Bernard because it was a horrible pass. <laughs> it was. That's for sure. The confident young man more than capable of taking on his role. Phillips. <laughs> Who taught him that? I tell you, I'm not going to say. And that was a quick shot. Up ahead. Hughes had to wait an eternity, but he scores. And that is the end. He's got the final word. And Mizzou leads by two against Xavier. That was a mistake by Blewett, taking that shot that quick, giving Missouri enough time to get a quality look on the other end. He's on the clock. Blewett takes that shot, allowing Missouri to get out, get a rebound, and a beautiful pass ahead to Hughes, who gives Missouri the two-point lead going into the break. Our halftime. And he's a guy that Xavier needs to have on the floor for them to be successful. For a year, right by the bucket against Blewett. But you see. Oh, Hughes drawing three defenders to him and then zipping the pass down to Per. Frankie Hughes from behind the arc. It's a big bucket right Phillips coming off the screen. This time it's good. And true to the scouting report, and it's simply about whether or not he becomes that leader to help them be better. And speaking of leadership, Van Leer was us. The other thing it means is when you have a bunch of sophomores and freshmen, as Hughes, the freshman, scores a three, there's no one to... They're letting Poirier, they're inviting him to throw that three, but here comes Hughes again! You know, Frankie Hughes beyond the three-point arc, knocking down his last two threes, back-to-back -back three pointers to give a bit of separation once again for the Tigers. You know, watching your team play basketball and then getting to hang out with Mickey Mouse afterwards. Seriously. Oh, don't worry about it. You know where I'm going when this game's over. <laughs> we got two great games. Tough shot by Perrier. Oh! What a putback by Sir Francis Hughes. Frankie Hughes, who has stepped up and made three-pointer after three-pointer here to keep his team ahead. Crow's Invitational has been a coming-out party for Frankie Hughes as he's made five three-pointers here at the HP Fieldhouse already in this game. And more importantly, he's made timely baskets to allow the Missouri Tigers to stay in the lead over a top-ten-ranked Xavier team. But right now, Frankie Hughes is going to have to continue this type of production down the stretch. It's, but a lot of it has to do with guys who are just so big and strong and physical now in college basketball. You caning these referees and eventually the coaching staff and players as well on points of emphasis. And again, cleaning up the game, freedom of movement, especially in the post. <laughs> For making the right play. Phillips gets the free throw. Two Tigers to start all 31 games last season. With 107 assists last year, that was the third highest. Play because you can use him in so many different ways. And in your point guard, Phillips has to guard him because he's their primary ball handler. So therefore, you can take a guy like Sumner to the post. Perrier going right this time. The lefty goes with his offhand and scores. Perrier with room. Tough shot. Needed shot for Kevin Perrier and the and when your team goes out and executes exactly what you draw up But more importantly with that he it had to be a great end that he's missed two straight free throws Inside tough pass Willie Jackson beautiful move on Bernard and you talk about that poise looks for room Blow it all the way He kept that per year fouled and that's Gaston's fifth it's a practice bubble big free throw by per year 
No. Both of them are tough, but he knocks down both of them. <laughs> the first was definitely not easy. Here we go. Another tie. Number 12 in this game. Four seconds. Sumner shoots. And we're going into the overtime presented by Continental Tire. It figures. Continue to move throughout this overtime. But Xavier has experience in being here before. Phillips driving. Jackson with a putback. What an athletic move. Once again on the glass, Jackson. Make room for a lot of other players tonight <laughs> for both teams. What a game. Phillips. Oh, a three. It's now a two. Tie this basketball game first after a five-point deficit, knocking down the long range. Importantly, he is about winning. And so, therefore, he's going to do whatever his team needs. 18 points, seven rebounds, seven rebounds, and five assists. If it's taking rebounding for him to win, he's up ahead to Frankie Hughes. He doesn't have numbers. He doesn't care. How about Missouri? Down screen. Phillips. Oh, with the move. Oh, what a move. And Missouri takes the lead. Pollard, he's legal to be in the game. And they discussed it. Here we go. A foul by Phillips on Sumner with a tenth of a second in a tie game. Remember, and a great play by Chris Mack. But you have to remember, Sumner has been to the line on two separate occasions and come away empty. Four he for ten. He only needs one free throw to win this game, but none of his free throws have had this much pressure on them to this point. Hughes, Van Leer, and per year. He missed it. Makes a second one. And now Kim Anderson per year will inbound. He's looking deep, of course. Quick pass, and that's the end of the game. I'm not sure they understood the instructions. They all look puzzled. It's the end of a wonderful game that finished in overtime. Number 11, Xavier, beats Missouri 83-82 in overtime at the Tire Pros Invitational here in our as well. Once again, your final score, Xavier 83 and Missouri 82. Stay tuned for more games in the Tire Pros Invitational. Now we'll go to the studio with Matt Schick and Dino Gaudio for the update. All right, thank you guys. Number 11, Xavier had to fight for this one, had to come back in this one and get it done in OT 83 to 80. Junior guard, Corey Alexander, I'm Alvaro Martin, and the stage is set for two teams that lost tough games yesterday who played excellent yesterday for Missouri had a couple miscues at the end of the game but his coaches are happy with his performance Lamont Simpson in charge of the tip Steve Olson and Randall Rick will be the referee and crew as well 43 point shots and you don't see many schools that are going to do that and even though they're great at it they need to find more balance similar to what Missouri's doing getting the ball inside the per year per year had himself compared to 43 point shots I think they need a bit more balance Nice fake and drive, and the floater by Frankie Hughes. What a game he had, the second consecutive 20-point game. Game yesterday, so, so meaningful to him and to his team, even though it was a loss. Here comes Woods. Uh, in, in Woods' is defense, he was playing against a pretty big front yeah. line. His action today, and only his second game of the season. Oh, what a shot by Cullen Ramdeer. Geist now manning the point for the Tigers. Reed Nickel with a nice soft touch on the lefty hook. Yeah, that was a nice move for Nickel on the inside. Took his eye off the ball. KJ Walton takes a rebound, puts it right back. He lost his starting job to Frankie Hughes when he had the guys inside to Nico and the foul. 
Missouri yesterday, we watched them struggle when Terrence Phillips went to the bench and Geis was in manning the point. But just like that, they're on a 6-0 and possibly had a pretty bad case of the flu here. Nice move by Nico, and he finishes. Becoming a factor. Kind of bounces himself out, correct? It does. Ooh, K.J. Walton the hard way. And the coaching staff from Missouri made it clear. Walton on the glass. Again, taking it to the rim. And finding... As per year, comes back into the court. A.J. Walton, four points, three boards so far. Nice lefty shot. And per year, obviously, I grew a wildcat. I don't know. But let's see, we are right by Animal Kingdom as guys knocks down another jumper. We're right by Animal Kingdom. Well, the fourth overall in the first half by Davidson, and that will be the end of the half. It's a 14-point Davidson lead in Missouri. I'm sorry, five points in overtime. They came back and actually took a two-point lead. Van Leer with a nice curl. Open up the offense for seven shots. Van Leer again from the other side. And just like that, Missouri looks better. Nice crossover. Per year with a nice drive to the basket. And per year was one of those 20 points. And per year does a great job here taking advantage of his quickness. McGarity has a size advantage, but per year definitely has the quickness advantage, and you see the nice ball handling to find his way to the rim. And just like that, you know, and I think guys did a very good job of selling it, but honestly, that should be incidental contact. Nice move, very quickly. Nice short cuts by attempts on the squad last year, averaging only 14 minutes a game was not stationary when Gibb ran into him. So, and again, it's, it's part of the game. Well, in the first half, hasn't been great offensively, but he can't afford to be tentative. That's one who does a great job of finding Van Leer, but I thought he gave up an opportunity. He's a guy that loves to attack the glass on both ends. Nico, beautiful pass by Phillips. Put him right where he, he could only get. That was so disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get a reaction from Oak Hill, Some of course. high school, are you kidding me? Yeah. Here comes Geist. Great defensive transition normally for this team, but not this time. Great pass by Geist. In the and Frankie Hughes is just trying to shoot his way into the game. Let's see what happens now. Two on two. He the made the right play, giving the basketball up. They've been playing together since they were in six and Frankie Hughes. And Hughes does not think about himself on that play and think about how he struggled offensively, but makes the right play and gives it up to Jackson, who's bigger, stronger, and in a better position to finish. Does just that. Draws the... Had always committed to Missouri. Frankie was committed to Louisville, but he decommitted. And then Willie Jackson began. Kevin, eight points, five boards. And we mentioned performances yesterday where they scored 82 points. But right now, only 46, now 47 points for this Missouri team with three and a half minutes left to go in this game. You're trying to find some room, not, not available. Nice block by Aldridge. Oh, great hustle and energy by Kevin per year. The third time to charge. No call. Here comes Jackson. Nice move. Great recognition by Geis and seeing that Aldridge fell down. Holds up Cannon right oh, he, there. He's been involved. He's been uh, he's been bouncing off bodies and KJ Walton back in this year. Phillips deflected into the hands of Jackson for the score. That will be the end of it. Once again, our final score, Davidson 70, Missouri 55. Stay tuned for more basketball from the Tire Pros Invitational as Clemson will take on number 11, Xavier, in our first Thanksgiving weekend in Columbia, Missouri. Basketball's also in the air as Mizzou returns to Mizzou Arena for the first time in a couple of weeks to host the Northwestern State Demons. To Hamilton. And now he hands to Isaiah Sweeney. Steal by Van Leer.
Across to Phillips, touch pass, K.J. Walton with the finish. Starts with Colin Van Leer, great read, almost like a safety right there to steal, pick off the pass. They're down by just one per year. Gives Mizzou the lead. It's a tough shot, but he's aggressive going to the rim. Strong hand with the left. Geist. Phillips is wide open. And he hits the corner three. Big shot. Good to see Terrence Phillips needs to get that confidence back. Geist somehow kept it away from Boyd. Corner three, Frankie Hughes. Frankie Hughes on cue. Such a quick release, versatile combo guard. Missed it, rebound by Woods. And he goes right in there, and the end one chance. Board bucket, foul for Russell Woods. This is the best we've seen Russell Woods so far. It cuts Missouri's lead back to single digits. Geist for three. That's what he can bring to this team. Strong defense and drop into triple every now and again. Walton's pass tipped right to the hands of Reed Nico. There you go, big fella. Get off and dunk that ball. Just under 17 minutes to play. There's a nice look. That was Willie Jackson finding Kevin Furrier. That's one of the things I love about Willie Jackson coming into this program is the fact that he is so unselfish. Kevin Furrier with a three-pointer. Phillips playing with those three fouls makes an instant impact. Van Leer for three. It's good to see right there. Colin Van Leer from deep to range, and it's set up by Terrence Phillips. Yep, Van Leer's getting hot. Lear with the rebound. Phillips running with Jackson. Smith the trailer. Beautiful pass set up by Terrence Phillips. And look at the excitement by this point guard. Addition to Mitchell Smith. Mitchell Smith sprinting the floor. Jackson with the rebound. Van Lear, the lob for Smith. What a pass from Colin Van Lear. That pass is so hard. Half court going full speed. Into the front court. Running with Jackson. Hughes the trailer. I love it. That's all Terrence Phillips. And you talk about four assists in the second half. And Missouri comes to the arena in Columbia, Missouri for a non-conference matchup between the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers and the Missouri Tigers. A lot of pull-up dribbles, a lot of drive baselines, and quick shots in the middle of the paint. So it's an effective shot. Good to see Terrence Phillips knock down a three-point shot. Van Leer. A little short. Rebound by Waters. Swiped away by Walton. And he goes right in to put the Tigers back on top. That's what we've seen more of from KJ Walton this year. Really good at finishing in traffic. Hughes kept it up, but he finally connects. And good to see him get a little confidence. Knocks down a shot. Another three Hughes. Maybe he's getting it going. And that's with range, and that's contested. Hughes. Three in a row. Yeah, he's feeling it. He is feeling it. No conscience with Frankie Hughes. There's Per Year. Goes straight to the hoop. That was an aggressive take. It was. Really good take. The Tigers wanted to run. They got held up, though. Here's Van Leer. Transition three. It's a good shot for Colin Van Leer. You can see the fist pump for him. I'm sure he's happy to see the ball go through the hole from the three point. Johnson again. They are feeding him early in the second half, but that one bounced off the rim. Hughes is going to go right to the hoop. Nobody picked him up, and he rocked the rim. Missouri is really good in transition when they dedicate themselves to sprinting the floor and running. Howard, a nice look. Johnson stripped. Terrence Phillips. Missouri looking to run. Phillips spins. Finds Willie Jackson. Again, Willie Jackson, he can score the ball. Perrier drives. A little teardrop. Kevin Perrier can make that shot. He can make shots around the rim right there. Right hands, Terrence Phillips. Frankie Hughes looking to have some fun. Get out and run the floor. The young freshman throwing it down with authority. Rim rocking in the second half. Finds per year. Oh, good touch pass, and Russell Woods finishes. Ball movement. Ball movement and player movement. When the ball moves and it doesn't stick, good offense happens. And Zuri on a five-minute scoring drought. It continues. Tough turnover. Lamamba aggressively. With under a minute to play now. Q Johnson lost it. Great defensive stand from Missouri. Q Johnson. Thomas with five seconds left. Missouri the rebound. Gets it in. Q Johnson a prayer. 
We will not go to overtime, Missouri. Missouri, Mizzou Arena for a non-conference showdown between the SEC and the Mid-American Conference as the Miami Red Hawks out of Ohio visit the Missouri Tigers. Per year with an and one chance. Good move, good finish, good to see Kevin Purrier finish around the rim. An area Missouri has struggled is finishing buckets at the rim. Good spin move. Smith running the floor. Mitchell Smith getting more playing time. Long athlete. Hughes calling for the ball as the trailer. Jordan Geist baseline. Willie Jackson. That's what he can do. They've talked a lot to Willie Jackson about when he's at the rim, sometimes he's finesse, he's trying to get the ball up off the glass. He can go dunk that basketball. Missouri looking for another transition chance. Hughes ahead of the pack. From one Cleveland native to the other Cleveland native, Frankie Hughes with authority. Great pass again coming from 15. Jordan Geist ahead of the break. Rave reviews for the Frankie and Willie show here at Mizzou Arena on a Tuesday night. Great pass ahead too. Good vision. And again, Frankie not laying the ball, go and dunk it. Such a weapon when you have a point guard at this size of a go rebound. What a pass. That's his main job, and he finds Kevin Curry. That's Missouri's offense. That's when it with a freedom of movement. Let Terrence Phillips go make a play. Phillips puts it up. Missouri back and front. I like that shot. I like that shot a lot. The ball is swung. There's nothing taking place at the top of the key. Tipped up and tipped around and swiped away by Terrence Phillips. He's on the move. Hughes back in the game, two fouls in the first half. Four-point play opportunity to start the second half. Phillips amongst the trees, got the rebound. Now he drives, kicks, Hughes. This is what he does. Same spot. Worked on that shot at the half. He was in that corner. Van Leer, open look. Tigers are hot from the outside to start the second half. Paul Van Leer, a guy that's got to get shooting the basketball like he's capable of. Woods down low, per year. Hughes drives baseline. Swung around, open look for Cullen Van Leer. He's hit two straight triples. Outstanding ball movement by Missouri. It's the pass, it's not the dribble, it's the pass. Big three-point shot from deep. That was from North Stewart from Cullen Van Leer. Stolen by Hughes. Woods comes crashing in. Good pass, good effort from Frank Hughes to get that steal. And again, Russell, Russell Woods just hanging around that paint. Cullen Van Leer has remained the hottest player on the floor in the second half, and there's a foul down low on Miami. Woods double teamed, and one chance for the senior from Chicago. Great move, great spin move. Jordan Geist with a three-pointer late in the shot clock. This one, impressive performance by Missouri. They're going to walk here, which almost four decades of terrific games down through the years, Missouri and Illinois in one of the great non-conference matchups in all of college basketball. Feel good over the holidays. You lose this game, you feel bad over the holidays, <laughs> and it leads you right into your conference play. So very important on both sides to get a victory here tonight. Again, Illinois has two graduate students. Woods, nice attack inside. As Mizzou gets Russell Woods going to the win. I mean, Tracy Abrams, we'll talk about him as the evening goes on. But inbounds look at a three hit. Mizzou needs all of those they can find. And it's Jordan Barnett. Who Abrams is an incredible courage. Missing two straight years. Geist on the breakout. Shoulder, make him go with the left. You got to credit Thorne for that bucket. And Jackson hits it home. Willie Jackson, a Cleveland freshman's last year. Coleman Lands had 87 makes a year ago from three. And Abrams has got eight of its ten points. And Geist has given them a lift now with a bucket country, but got them all the way to the finals here in St. Louis, by the way, when they lost to North Carolina. The advantage inside that time on the mismatch. He took his time. Phillips was waiting on that three. Talked about earlier, he had 22 points and 10 rebounds. Range game, and he can step out and knock down the three. Kim Anderson was telling us today, per year, and that's going to force John Gross to put him. He's tough to stop. Per year works hard inside to get his first field goal. Woods takes it right to Thorne and Russell Woods. If you can win these last four minutes, you got to feel good about yourself going into the half. 
Strong move into the lane by Prayer. He's got six points. A test from Barnett that time. There's the Phillips that you want to see. Turns it up, another gear. And Prairier right at his season. Dodges one there. And Frankie Hughes hits an early offense three. First points of the night for the Tigers. He's got a chance to be the Big Ten player of the year. Van Leer. Gets a three. Again, a high volume. Horn and Morgan have been effective inside. Hughes quick, but follows the shot. And Prayer cleans the trap. Good answer by Malcolm Hill. And Van Leer. Give credit to John Gross's staff. Who worked with the bigs in the offseason? Because how improved are these guys? And now Perrier tries to get it back. And he's got a chance for an and one answer. For Maverick Morgan. Of Illinois had a three-point play off a break off a of make. Now per year answers three-point play. And yet Missouri does a good job defensively. Now Geist trying to create inside and somehow rainbows it in. Geist is Morgan. Geist with one on the shot clock, and he is playing with confidence. And that's exactly what they're doing here. It looks like. Doesn't look close. Jay Williams already hit his three for the night. Geist, his own press. Break. Jordan Geist, one on three. And now he almost gets a steal. With a free path to the basket for that offensive rebound. And Jordan Barnett, the St. Louis. To be that floor leader. Phillips splits a pair. That's his first second half. Got two complete platoons, then he can mix and match. Woods rolls it in, and good defense by Morgan. Black off the glass. Phillips. Here's Missouri again within. Per year, they're just four of six at the line. That's an issue. This would be his 13th point. Of the fighting Illini. Nico banks it in. He's four of seven. And that one rolls in. This is now. Courier banks it in using the other hand. A year in the SEC and fighting through. Playing all the bigs he's had to play. He said a quick step on that post up. He turns, faces, and goes with it. And he's been able to show. Really controlled the inside. Net. The transfer from Texas will finally make his long-anticipated Mizzou debut Saturday at 2.30 p.m. here at Mizzou Arena when the Tigers take on Eastern Illinois. It's been a long time coming for the St. Louis native, who once had a 40-20 game in this building in helping his high school team win a state championship. And when I spoke with Jordan, he could hardly hold back his excitement. I can't wait, man. It's, 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 it's unbelievable to even think about it, man. Like I have a calendar sitting at home in my room. Like just I'm just marking off days of when like my first game is. You know, it's it's great that it's against uh, Eastern Illinois. You know, I know a couple players. You know, I play with and played against uh, a couple players from that team. You know, in St. Louis. So uh, it'll be great to be playing against them. You know, see them on the court and see how they're doing. So it'll be it'll be so fun. I really I really can't I can't wait. It's gonna be oh, it's gonna be a show. I haven't played in you know, a like real game in so long, you know, and I've just been so anxious to get back out there, you know, show what I can do and show my teammates what I can do and, you know, show Mizzou what I can do, you know, and I feel like I can really be a big help to this team. And I feel like I'll bring something that, you know, we don't necessarily have and I just feel like it's going to you know, look really good. It's going to make us so much better. What is that thing that you want to bring to this team to help fill out the 16-17 uh, the Tigers? <laughs> Man, I just like just – Another another big scoring threat, another person who can run the floor and get, you know, easy buckets, you know, a good defender, you know, just, there's, <laughs> I'm not trying to hop myself up or anything, but, you know, I just feel like there's a lot of stuff I can bring that can really help this team, you know, so, because right now we need it. Making the right decision, you get the feeling that they have the talent, that if they just let it go, they'd see better results. 
Case in point. Look at this guy. Uh, pardon me, Jordan guys. Willie's a Vandy product, by the way. Jordan Geis has been magnificent this year, per year. Got it? The lefty's got four. Beautiful slip by Nico, and he has a block, gets it back, and will give it up. Barnett, leaner, off the window. Well, honestly, as he just skated right across the parking lot. I still got it, Tom Hart. Still got it. <laughs> Geis banks it in. They're going to check it at the next step. Phillips gets the screen from Perrier, gets all the way into the paint, whips it back to the lefty. He'll tee one up. A Missouri on a 13-0 run. Kevin Perrier with a trip. Barnett pulls. Wow! Who is this team? Mizzou is playing fast and loose. It pays off in slots and it pays off in hoops. <laughs> We said it was a new season. And for whatever reason, the Missouri Tigers are displaying that. Vanderbilt, you're not the only one who can shoot the trade ball. Missouri Tigers right now. Rebound, but the Tigers get it instead. The Hughes, transition three, popped it, no. Oh, oh he popped it. <laughs> Barnett went up and got it, and then called on Jordan Barnett. Missouri had not had many highlights here in the second half, but Jordan Barnett stuffing that one home. Georgia, though, up by three with 14.40 left in the game. Shot difficult just by his presence. The lob for Smith. Half court going full speed and a perfect pass to Mitchell Smith for the dunk. Showed off that length. The six foot ten inch frame went high for that one. Brought the crowd to the feet, energy in this building. Mitchell Smith making his mark. His debut as the Tigers, Jordan Barnett. It's been 1,001 days since he played in a game on this court. That was in high school. this Missouri team can play when he gets going. One 
wondered what George Barnett could bring. We know he's athletic. Look at him. Pull up off the bounce, knocks it down from 16. Prepare for lift off. Wow. Missouri on a Saturday afternoon. It's time for SEC basketball on the SEC Network. Inside Mizzou Arena, great to have you along. Isolate one thing that you think you need to do well today. Where would you start? Maybe knocking out threes from the corner. That's what KJ Walton does right there. Tough pass inside. Nico goes strong to the rim and one. Barnett on Hannah. Pulls up. Barnett rattles it home. One of the toughest shots in the game of basketball. Knock inside 10. Walton on the drive. Count the basket and a foul. He's the, everybody takes on his. He is Coach Anderson on the floor. Inside, shot clock winding down. No problem for KJ Walton. Nine points for Walton. Geist finds Barnett. Big three from the corner for Jordan Barnett. Missouri scored only 54 in the entire game against Florida on Thursday night. Cullen Van Leer. Geist with a long three. Offensive rebound. Breer puts it back in, and Missouri will take a 13-point lead into the locker room. Breer knocks down a three. Barnett going to try a three. Barnett got a three. Tough matchup for Kings and guard Barnett that far out on the perimeter. Evan Breer about to come back in. A four-point lead for Missouri. Missouri has missed six of its last seven shots, but not that one, says Jordan Geist. And he's fouled. Perrier doubled immediately by Thompson and Cook. Phillips is back in. K.J. Walton high off the square. Tipped around. Perrier got it. He finishes with the left hand. This is a, this is a hard fought win for this Missouri ball club, and they played their hearts out tonight, and I'm happy for them. Geist makes one of two. It is a five-point game, and the Missouri Tigers have strapped a, snapped a 13-game losing streak with an 83-78 win over the Arkansas Razorbacks. Hey, great job, man. Great job. You know what you did? That fight you played. That fight you played well. You played to win. Or if you didn't play not to lose, you played to win. All right? That's one. That's one. I'll try to hey. something now. Yeah. Enjoy this. Enjoy this. You sure as hell learn. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Here we go. Right for right on three. One, two, and three. That's right. Hey. Everybody's here safe, all right? So let's go out and win a basketball game. Woo! I don't think I've ever had a cup of coffee. Really? What's the signal? This. 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 Okay. I thought maybe I was wrong for a minute. So what's the signal? Huh? I got a microphone on. Hey, what's the key on this? Missouri head coach Kim Anderson is not accustomed to wearing a microphone. It's good. Ball pressure. Ball pressure. But after four decades in basketball, his courtside classes should be mandatory listening. Side of the ball. Look before you throw. It won't always be open. Dribble out sooner. Run it again. Why do we say that? Just so you understand. If you run down there, I always tell you your butt's got to point to where you want the guy to go catch the ball. So if you go down there and set it that way, he's coming here. You got to circle a little bit here. Why do they why do they all wear different shoes? Because they can. They have to be black, white, gray, or gold. That's what I was told when I took this job. When I played, we only had like one or two pair. 
I hated wearing new shoes. Make one more. Got to make one more. Make another one, will you, so we can go eat? There it is. All right, bring it in. One, two, three, one, two, three, win. Win. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. You've done a great job of preparation. Maybe one of the best jobs you've done all year. We want to attack them. Don't play tentative, all right? Hey, you're going to have to make your own music today now, OK? I mean, they got the stereo, but you're going to have to make your own music. Everybody's got to be on the same page. You guys on the bench got to be talking. You got to be talking. You got to be helping your teammates out, and you got to be getting yourself ready to go in the game, OK? Everybody ready to go? Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. No matter how difficult the season, a team always gets up when a rival comes to town. When Arkansas visited Columbia, Missouri hadn't won a conference game this season. It didn't matter. Hey, let's get a stop here. We're messing around. Arkansas, tough shot. Rebound to Barnett underneath. Guys finds Barnett. Missouri, the Tigers, their last time they were at home, they picked up a big win over Arkansas, hoping to do the same against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Coming in 12 and 12, Missouri at 6 and 17. Davey alongside former Missouri All-American guard John Sonny. 24-pounder, we'll be seeing a lot of this guy, Jordan Barnett, the transfer from Texas, kind of found a home here in Missouri. Yeah, has been outstanding, the St. Louis native at 17 in the win against Arkansas, 23 in the loss against a &M. He's dynamic, he's powerful, might not get to the free throw line as much as his coaches would like him to, but again, a focal point for Missouri on the offensive end. He's been coming off the bench, saw due to some violation of uh, university policy. Will suit up today for the Commodores and will be available to play, will not start. Talked to Bryce Drew before the game this afternoon and said it'll just kind of be a field thing, but he will. Today they, they shot 47%, so it's been better. Van Leer underneath. Nice pass, good look. Score the bucket for Russell Woods. Good pass from Van Leer. Double team there by Roberson. Per year lines it up. That's a three. Devin Per year. Per year again. Got it again. Off to Phillips. Kept alive by Walt. He'll try it again. 10-6 Missouri on the floor. Well, Kevin Per year not known for his outside shooting. But it's good enough, and if you give him space and give him room, he nicks in one, knocks in two. Year, a few minutes a game, and then Shaka Smart came in and he was there for a semester. Transferred a year, he shows up big on the film. They start going, my goodness, what an athlete. He can shoot it, he can play above the rim, he can defend. 
That's all I'm going to oh, do that, for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a great night for some basketball right here on the SEC Network. Florida visits all. Most of the players pop us in. We'll make him put on the floor and go. Play behind him. Make him go in front of him. Barnett. Ooh. Barnett. Take a look at Barnett's range. Now, this is a guy that's 6'7". Last Saturday was a big day inside Mizzou Arena. Brad Luce, his daughter Ryan has been diagnosed with cancer. They had the Rally for Ryan game, raising money for cancer, cancer research, and boy, the Tigers played some inspired basketball as they just uh, took it to the Hawks. Missouri led by 13 at the break. They would go on to win 83-78. They shot a season best 51% from the field. There is Brad Tuff. First two years, actually, I should say, total 57 free throw attempts his first two years. Another three. Shot to drop now, Missouri. Missouri's chance. They have uh, this five of their last six. That will be said Terrence Phillips much today, but we will right now. Yeah, and, and when you watch Roberson, he likes the physicality of playing. He likes the contact, and Barnett man, continues his hot streak. His third three. Been a little too strong. Per year. Ball fake. Jumper. Got it. And Woods gets the first one to go down. Just 59% at the line, but got them both to go down. He's 39% at the line a year ago. Keep, keep, keep it alive. Keep it alive. How about 10 offensive rebounds today? Going up. Missed opportunity, good pass. That is not a missed opportunity. It's a chance on one end, and then defensively, they kind of get in the scramble. They had to run back. They were trying to match up man for man, trying to find guys, and lack of communication. Woods gets easy. 13 seconds, 12 seconds. Now five to separate the shot clock and the game clock as Phillips steps in and knocks it home. Cornette. Too strong and a fantastic first 20 minutes for Missouri. They shoot 37%, but they knock them five three pointers and some uh, verbal exchanges going on. 5 29 here at Mizzou Arena. Tigers lead it by four points in the first, even three points in the first half. It was interesting how early Vanderbilt came out. Good spin. Woods. Here's Geist. I, I believe this is really about Riley as he doesn't force a lot of shots. But he's 17 wow. fouls for Vanderbilt, so free throws the rest of the way out for Missouri. And, and you think of that, and because the game is chip, an easy game so far for him, very smooth. It's Roberson with three. Barnett, 18 points now. Our fifth lead chance. Out on Barnett, but it was a long rebound. Woods. Nice pass. Good pass from K.J. Walt. Three on two, run out. Ball fake, layout. Wow. Woo. My goodness. Timeout, Vanderbilt. This kid had some ability, huh? Wow. Offensively, how about the block and the dribble? And more spectacular the finish. Missouri's last 11. Take a look at some of his work today. You know, how do you be productive? Uh, he's got 20 points on eight field goal attempts. Just eight. So every time he touches it, he has delivered. And here you've got a three on two break, now two on one. Most guards will say, I'm going to go till someone stops me. And he went all the way and went around to 7-1 Cornette. It's pretty good. Oh, that is, that is silky smooth. Challenge. He's going to stay close to it. A little lean back. And who else? Q Witherspoon does that a little bit, right? Kind of catches you off guard when you don't think he's going to shoot it. I thought he got fouled. Phillips backs up. Got it. Tough shot. 
tough shot, good solid defense. Shot clock winding down, and watch the step back. And the chance can't get to him. And Philly three. And Lear, ball fake, three on the way. His game has changed. Minutes without a field goal. Here's Phillips. And I'm not sure if Phillips knocked that ball before shot and too early in the shot clock. Per year. Openings when they have it. Strong move. You know, Perrier had two buckets last Saturday against Arkansas. They might knock it home one or two, but Barnett and Perrier have combined to hit eight of the nine. Yeah, Kevin Perrier three of three, and Jordan Barnett five of seven. And his have been the wide variety of catch and release, and Perrier getting his feet set. Hit two in the first half and one in the second. Has just disappeared. They have missed nine straight field goal attempts. I would say when Bandy goes dry, Dave, it's that, okay. So their offense plays around the three-point line. In Alabama. You do grind it out of practice. Eh? He even said this might be one of the best practice teams he's ever had. I mean, these guys. It's tough because this is a veteran team. The guys have been around for chance. Cornette, Fisher Davis, Roberson, ball playing again. Teams can go in there and handle Arkansas. Bandy was up 20 half time in that game, one by 13. In true road games. And Phillips hits the jumper to make it a 20. That's it. Missouri wins back to back home games. And they hold Vanderbilt without a field goal. Over the last 12 minutes and 13 seconds of the game as Vandy misses 12 straight from the field. The Tigers have won two of their last three. Watch out. And they win this one by 20. So for John Sunfold, I'm Dave Neal saying so long for now, but we'll come back to Columbia for more. We'll hear from Kim Anderson. Stay with us, but now it's time for us to sit at the Peter Burns with SC. Missouri lost their next road game by just three, but they then hosted Vanderbilt, ready to prove they could still protect their house. Rebounded the Commodores by 18. But the score stayed close. Wins are never easy in the competitive Southeastern Conference. To assure victory, the Tigers needed motivation from their head coach. If I call a play for you and you're guarding some guy that's no good, and you settle for an 18-foot jump shot, take it to the hole. You think they can guard you? No, no, okay. You got to set that ball screen, and then you got to roll. You can't hesitate, okay? All right, good job. It's a way to bounce back now. Hey, let's be smart. Let's be smart what we're doing. Okay, you're doing a good job down here. Okay? 
The Tigers are going to win for the second consecutive Saturday. Missouri does it by blowing out Vanderbilt here in Missouri Arena by 20-72-52 the final. Missouri's second conference win of the year was also the 300th career win for Kim Anderson. Well, it took a while to get it. Obviously, it's it's not me. It's so many uh, people that have helped me throughout my career and, and uh, just the players, the players and the coaches. And, you know, I'm just the conductor of the band and everybody else is doing the work. The Alabama Crimson Tide are coming to Columbia and the Missouri Tigers are preparing to beat them. Tigers head coach Kim Anderson is the first on the practice court, showing his players how he used to do it. You gotta get lined up just right. Take a look at just a couple things. Hit it, G. They put Ingram at the point right under the basket, Russell. That'll be you. They put big and big here, and then guard is back here safe. We don't want that pass to go to that guy. Okay, now that's a big guy. That's a big guy. So what are they going to do? They're going to hit him, and then what happens? We got to come over and pick him up, and then the other guy steps in. All right, this is the one they like the most. They call it Arizona. They ran this several times versus us, okay? Everybody pay attention. Ball side guard has to take dive, man. Does everybody see that? That's not the way we guarded it last time. It was a problem because they went right here to him and they'll give it back to Norris as the inbound. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. let's get some shots. Let's go down here. Alabama prep is over, but Mizzou has one last lesson to learn today. You gonna make one? Man, Lear! Anderson holds a half-court skills competition with a tasty prize. Lunch? We gotta make one. We have to get the coaches involved. It's important and valuable to end a day of hard work on the court with a little enjoyment. Today's contest also underscores a valuable lesson. He who starts practice frequently ends it. First try. <laughs> Does it surprise you? Let's go. Mine counts three. Let's go. Let's go. Bring it in. Bring it in. All right, we're going to go up and eat. Hey, we got to get focused now. We got to get focused. All right. Family on three. One, two, three. All right, let's go eat. Missouri men's basketball still carries the Tigers' pride. Their fortunes in conference have improved lately. But their opponent tonight is formidable. Tonight inside of Missouri Arena on Norm Stewart's court, the Missouri Tigers will try to make it three consecutive wins at home as they host the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Alabama in town trying to sweep the Tigers today as they try to solidify their postseason resume. This is an Alabama team that is long and athletic. One of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country, the best in the SEC. 14 offensive rebounds a game, so tonight Missouri is going to have to do a good job contesting shots and try to just keep them off the glass. Missouri's hot. They've won two out of three in the league. And a key will be the post presence on both sides. Ready, coach? Ready. All right, here we go. Keys, transition defense, okay? Got to get back. We got three getting back to start with. Talk, have urgency, hold ball, corral Ingram, not letting him get in the paint, okay? Five committed blockouts, man. We've talked a lot about that. Coach hit on it earlier today, said no <laughs> second chance points. Run hard to the offensive end. We got to look for numbers in transition. If we don't get it, what do we got to do? Side to side, trying to get to the third side. Great ball movement, 
talked about that. Winning 50-50s, toughest team. Same way we did on Saturday night against Vandy. You won 50-50s, you were the toughest team. You got a bunch of reminders up there. We talked about all those. You know a bunch of them. I'll help you with the call. I will tell you this right now, and it's what you did really well the other night against Vandy, is rebound. Rebound, OK? They're big, they're strong, and they're all gone. OK, so we got to do a great job on the uh, defensive end. But hey, let's go get offensive rebounds, too. We did a great job of that. We won the game the other night, 21 to 4 second chance points. Remember now, this is a white line game. It's a white line game. It's not like Vandy. You know, Vandy was more of a, a three point team. These guys can shoot threes, but we still got to help on the white line. <laughs> hey, listen, go out and play your butt off. Have fun, just like you've done here the last couple of games, OK? But we all got to be ready to play. We all got to be ready to play, all right? It's all this is up there on the board, but it's all coming down to right here. And that's what you've done the last three, four games. They build, build on what you've worked so hard for, OK? Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Family. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Missouri approaches every game the same. Win the battles. Beat the opponent in front of you. Do what you can and strive for victory. Here comes our Tigers. The Tigers tonight are fired up. Tigers tonight are fired up focused and enjoying the adulation of their most loyal fans. Let's go Tigers! 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 From the opening tip, Missouri's concentration on defense during the week is effective. But there's a trade-off. Their offense is suffering. Slow start for both teams. Well, they're aggressive, and when you're aggressive, you give yourself an opportunity to win. We want a basket, basket boys. You make the basket, we'll make the noise. Hey, Jay, don't settle. You're just settling. Take the ball to the hole, get it reversed, and then drive it. Ain't no cool deal, man. You gotta take the ball to rack. Coach Kim Anderson did a nice job of reading his team. Obviously, they went through some adversity early. Then you go on a tough streak to be an SEC play, but he has turned the corner for this basketball team. Missouri's an underrated defensive team themselves. I got about five 50-50s on it. Get back! Get back! There is a lid on the rim tonight. Hey, we'll make shots. Okay, they're not making shots, all right? Good job. Good defense. Now you're doing a much better job of boarding. You're doing a much better job of boarding. Hey, 50-50 balls, that's the game. In rebounding, in rebounding. Exactly what we said it would be. Come on, man. Come on, let's go. Go, defense. One, two, three. Let's go, let's go. The Tigers offense begins to click. If they can score without sacrificing defense, they can beat back the surging tide. Right side lane cut off, misses the 10, tipped up and in by Burriers and went around the rim and in. Here's Perry. Got it? Nice. Walt turns the corner, right side of the lane. High arc, shot off the glass and in over Hall. Good strong right hand that time by KJ Walton. Couldn't stop the ball. Good job, KJ! 
Impressive by the Missouri Tigers. They're just quicker, better off of the bounce, nice energy, and playing with supreme confidence right now. Yeah, nobody stops the ball for Alabama. Great job by Jordan Guys getting all the way to the rim. Swing it, swing it, swing it! Baseline, Walton, a three, made it. He splashed it home. Outstanding ball movement. Exactly what it takes when you're facing a good defensive team. To the free throw line, left wing, Van Leer, three on the way, made it! Missouri holds Alabama under 20% shooting to give them their lowest scoring half of the year. At the break, the Tigers have a five-point lead. Guy. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay. All right. Yeah, you got him. You got him six times. Three in a row. That's that's great. That's great. We talked early about uh, rebounding. Okay, plus five rebounding, plus one on the offensive boards. We are. Okay, that's good. That's good. We got to continue to do that. I thought the last 12 minutes you played a lot harder. You started getting the 50-50 balls. Okay, you did a good job on that. That you got to keep that going. Okay, but attack the basket. Attack the basket. Don't back down. Don't back down. They're not calling anything, okay? They're not calling anything. It's just whoever's got the bigger helmet. Whoever's got the bigger helmet, okay? Hey, we can't come out here and be complacent defensively. You're guarding them. You got to keep guarding them. You got to keep winning the glass. We're up five on the glass. All right. Now, I would look for them to come uh, maybe with some traps. All right, with some traps. We may pick it up a little bit and do some pressing ourselves, okay? Because I think you can make them turn the ball over. All right, you don't have to do anything spectacular. I think I think you can just guard them, guard them tight, and, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll turn the ball over. Okay. Again, rebounding, 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 rebounding is a huge part of this second half. All right. Well, we're up five. We should be up ten or fifteen. All right. Let's go. Twenty more minutes. Twenty more minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hustle out. The start of the second half continues the success of the first. Alabama misses their first five shots. Missouri is still scoring. Left side of the lane, jump stop, flips it up and in, it gets fouled. Here's Phillips, jumped in the lane, and jumped into a foul and it in one. Here's per year, now puts it on the deck, gets the left block, starts baseline jump, look good. Left side key wide open. Norris lays it up and in. That's just too easy. Avery Johnson to the elbow into the paint, scoops it off the glass and in. That's a tough, tough shot by Avery Johnson. Every week in the SEC, the story is the same. Teams fight to the last. The clock is running down, but the tide is rushing in. He runs left to right in the front court to the right side of the lane, high off the glass, good. He hews a three to extend it. Bang! He buried it. Guys with the shot clock winding down. Oh, he got the roll! Way to fight back. Now let's build some more momentum. Let's get, let's get a stop here and get another bucket. Norris denying Phillips, who got by him. We'll put up a long two. Oh. I thought that was off of Ingram. So did this Mizzou Arena crowd and Kim no Anderson. Way. No way. Who hit it? Who hit it? Kim Anderson's got to be careful. He's Who being warned to get off the floor. Yeah. Oh. The crowd and Coach Anderson has the right to be upset. Next play. you got to go on to the next play. Can't worry about that play. Ingram. 
makes him pay. Wow, Dejan Ingram with his second three. It's a first Alabama lead since it was seven to six. Tough break for the Missouri Tigers. Ingram got it again. He's taken over this game late. Let's go, come on, wake up, let's go. The Tigers' lead is crumbling. The tide is raging. Ingram, got it! Two big-time taggers from Dejan Ingram. Alabama's on a 14-1 run. Come on, you guys! Missouri does a lot right tonight, but their last chances are not enough. Sustained success remains elusive for Missouri. This year has been a challenge. But the Tigers and their fans won't ever stop striving to improve. Nobody's expecting them to go in there and win this basketball game, but remember last year, they didn't participate. Try to use this to start a little bit momentum towards Nashville and, and see what happens. Nonetheless, we will see you at halftime. It is time. The nation's made the trip down to Columbia, Missouri. It's Kentucky's just third ever trip to Columbia. They've won their previous two meetings. New conference play, and this is a team that scores nearly 90 a game in Kentucky. They've been slowed down a bit on the road. Teams have challenged them, made it more of a half-court game. Good start for the Tigers. Russell Woods gets Missouri on the board first. Monk threw it away. Here comes K.J. Wooten for a 4 nothing lead. Games and as John mentioned, they've come in their last three home games over Arkansas and Vanderbilt after an 0-9 start in SEC play. Terrence Phillips rattles home a three. And where has Missouri? Good ball movement here and a confidence of Terrence Phillips, who has been pretty good in SEC play, nearly 12 points a ball game and shooting it quite well. He's had some years ago when Kim won a Division II championship. He had a very similar situation. He had 10 brand new guys on that roster, and he's dealing with that now with this very young Missouri team that's back. Some rough years, obviously some of the residual effects of the end of the Frank Haith era put Kim Anderson and this Missouri program into a bit of a tough spot. The wins haven't been there regard for for long periods. Barnett, the block, Barnett, the dunk. lot of possessions at the other end of the floor for long periods. Barnett the block, Barnett the dunk. We talked about Barnett, the ability the coaches have really begged him to come out of the shell enough to do these things. He's explosive, he can shoot it, he's talented. We've seen it in stretches but not consistently enough and Adam going back 30 seconds of offense to get points, and they're going to have to work as hard on defense. That was pretty as Barnett finds Woods. Barnett's got a great... ...as well for Missouri. Here is Barnett. Knocks down the long two. A quick switch defensively. Kentucky with a two-point lead, and the question was, could Missouri stay and play with Big Blue Nation? And they'd have to do it defensively in a high percentage. They've been active. They've been shooting the ball well at 54%, defensively moving their feet, getting their hands on some steals, and easy finishes on the other end. So far, a good start for Mizzou. Kentucky, though, still with a the lead. They have 10 of their 15 points thus far in the paint. A lot they like That's right. tight shirts off. Absolutely. Mizzou. Matchup zone, so, match yep, so for the same thing. Second possession, they've done it. How about that? I was just thinking, like, you see the zone, say, all right, shoot us. Jones wanted traveling on Monk as he made that pass. Here's Barnett. Sloppy game so far. And Barnett leans in for his third field goal off the bench. How good, though, is this kid? He can take it, he can shoot it. They want him to kind of be an alpha male once in a while on the court, Jordan Barnett. And the fans here at Mizzou Arena haven't had a ton to cheer about. They're on their feet right now in a two-point game. Sometimes, uh, Willis had some issues holding on to the basketball as well. Neither team shooting the free throws well at all. That's the first make on four tries for Missouri. Barnett has seven. 
because he's a long range shooter and his size at 6'8, he can go over the top. Phillips wants it and knocks down his third three of this first half. Good challenge by Mulder. Either got hit or maybe got a little stinger. Phillips bouncing underneath. Thrown down by Nico for the lead. Bodies out there. Guys grabbing their shorts, bending over. Now Missouri walks it up the court. And Barnett with the blow by right past Mulder for a four point lead. John Calipari, timeout. SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by Gatorade, the proven sports fuel. This season, they're not as much that way. Courier looking for his first point tonight. Stay with it. I wasn't sure he was going to take the shot. Second half. I've seen this before. I saw Missouri challenge South Carolina. I saw what they did Arkansas when they came to Missouri. Vanderbilt. What they do is they challenge you. They give great effort. Okay. They yeah. challenge you on every pass. Every shot, every rebound, 50-50 balls are usually theirs. They should start calling 50-49 balls for, for Missouri. That's what they give you. On the other side of that, though. Congratulations, by the way, to our very own John Sunbolt, who you are hearing on the call as he is being honored as Missouri's SEC legend this year. Second half is next. So early look. Have not scored in this half until now. A.J. Walton going to the line with an A-1. Gabriel looked like he was there, but uh, not quite. Kind of got his body sideways, and this is what K.J. Walton does. Puts it on the floor, attacks. Doesn't necessarily play above the rim. But a good answer on that possession. Right. Much needed. And the speed of a point guard when they put it on top of your back. Phillips, all he wanted was contact, and once the officials... You're waiting a little bit now for Monk to get on a little bit of a run, because that's what he does. Make two, three. Point game, Phillips. All the way inside for two. Here comes. Right at the rim, it's laid in by Frankie Hughes off the Phillips speed. Solid screen by Geis, lack of communication. This is two shots for him. He has led Missouri with 13 tonight. Now 14. 19, two and 12 in the league. Many games are close, and then they'll have a five or six possession when they just have a drought. They Woods to Geis. Good closeout by Hawkins. Geis takes a tough shot and knocks it down for his first points. You had a hunch he wanted to shoot that thing, huh? Shot clock did not change. Nope, still moving to 16 for Phillips. Solid. And the weak side can't stay in front of him. Phillips, we talked about it. His explosiveness off the dribble, the pullback. He's been solid shooting a three in SC. Walton trying to turn on the Jets. Wow. And with Adebayo closing in, went high off the glass. Walton, a driver, turns a corner, and this is a soft, difficult Ooh. finish. My goodness. Ooh. Left in this game. Every offensive possession for Missouri, they put out a bio in a pick and roll situation. So he's had to come help in an up and down pace game. Two big free throws for Phillips to make it a two point game. We go to Laura Rutledge. Adam, after Coach Cow got the tech play toughness, he wants him to be tougher with the ball and tougher defensively. Barnett ties the game at 52 with his first points of the second half. And De'Aaron Fox down to the deck and slow to get up. Fox went down, Gabriel. Barnett turn the corner and he will slide between two Kentucky defenders. Here comes Gabriel and runs right into teammates. Oof. Oh, when he went down. Hey. Oh. Watch the knee bend. Straight back. Man, very tough to watch. It's a big early 12 points the ball game. There's a make for Korean. Kentucky run. Barnett. Aggressive to the rim for two. Jordan 
Garnett with authority. Ooh. Remember, this game was tied at 52. It's a 10-1 Kentucky run. Barnett. Aggressive to the rim for two. Jordan Barnett with authority. Ooh. of Fox to deter and then wrapped him up. How about this move? Powerfully strong, aggressive, attacking. And as you said, Adam, the crowd in this building right back in it. Phillips defensively. As Bam went for it. Stay on the ground, wait till a guard goes up before you want to make the ball. He has a free throw stripe, plus three assists and three rebounds. New career high is 22 for Terrence Phillips. Times. I'm sure fans feel the same way. Their hearts are probably breaking for this young man. So hard mentally to block it out. But you must if you're on the court. Rebounds his first career SEC double-double. Two big free throws for Geist to cut it down to an eight-point game with the game. Geist able to pick up 33 seconds to go. And some full court. For anybody, all of that being said, it ends up with a 10-point Kentucky win on the road. It was tied at 52 with 7.45 remaining. Kentucky outscores Missouri 20 to 10 over that final score. My goodness. All right, so here you go. Auburn and Missouri. There's... Is this going to be Kim Anderson's last game coaching those guys? It's a group he loves to death. Certainly, if they lose, it is. But can they come in and knock off Auburn and live another day? That game's coming up. Nightfall at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. It is time for game number two of the 2017 SEC Men's Basketball Tournament. In a rematch of action from Saturday to close the regular season, 14 seed Missouri in a matchup with 11 seed Auburn. One game already in the books. We'll always be so glad that he got time with him. Also, a lot of the other Missouri players saying that in learning about this news for Kim Anderson, he's been a lot looser. He's been fun, almost funny guy. League at 80 points a game are these Auburn Tigers. And Tom, when you mention Auburn being young, 106 freshman starts for this squad. Young, energetic, they get up and down the floor and they can score in bunches. Missouri's got to stay with them. That his team is primed for a run in this tournament. He said it's really simple. We know we can score points. We're going to score points. The question is, can we get stops? And they did on the first five possessions. See if a post player can beat you from this Missouri squad. Because what they're best at, and Phillips might be their best spot up shooter. He wins a year. That's including some vacated wins after an NCAA investigation from the previous coaching staff. That was one of those obstacles that was in place. But Kim Anderson, shooter, use his size and skill set. Remember, he had to sit out the first semester to the end of the first semester as a transfer of mid year from Texas. Played one. Four threes against Ole Miss, A&M, respectively. Barnett finally gets one to go. His first field goal. Some over the screen, and Perrier will let it go. He's been struggling from deep, but knocks that one down. He's got two threes. To wow, Frankie Hughes with the bucket. More from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Or well, Rutledge was near the Auburn huddle. This time, and you mentioned the tempo. He keeps telling him to speed it up. He's also saying run with. Hughes gets it into Woods. He was all alone. What a start by Missouri. The Tigers are up. Woods was left all alone. Hughes looking to score. And now here's one, two, three white jerseys. And all alone sits Woods. No weak side help. Everybody deserted. Any coach would say, why are you going to guard the guy in the far corner when there's one under the bucket that yeah. you could go get? Well, Bruce Pro has pointed out time and again. Harper back in. We'll see if Auburn can get to Missouri, who averaged double figures. Went to the free throw line 12 times. One side. 
Yeah. I would just argue that I should be there, not the career went to that foul line. But yeah, find your spot. Good release. I'm sure, we can find an establishment that would have a chance. A couple right outside the Bridgestone Arena. Finishing his sophomore season, he's got two years left and uh, big upside to him. Plays hard. This year, played for Billy Gillespie, Ranger Junior College. In and out, he's always consistently played minutes in and out of a starting lineup. As Kim Anderson trying to fry him. To seven for the field. Boy, he's got 10 points on four field goal attempts tonight. Cullen Van Leer from deep. Got it! Huge for Missouri if he spots up and makes shots. Your line. Good set play, pick up high, and Van Leer comes from down low, gets wide open. Spot up shooter delivers. He raised livestock as a kid. Mm. Got it. Five lead changes early in this game. Then Missouri got wow. ahead of Van Leer from way downtown. That's deep. Shot the ball well. They exploded against Arkansas 50%. Played well against Vanderbilt, upper 40%. They hung in games because they shot it well. If their spacing's good, feet are set, shoulders set, they're not bad. It's the forced shots, and it's usually game by game. It's been five or six. Hughes with three. May not have been aware. Finally gets it towards midcourt and can't get it off. Not sure if there was clock and score awareness on the inbounds. And Kim Anderson's going to have a word of Frankie Hughes. I'd be asking, hey, come on. Make sure our head's in the game here. You know what the clock situation is. <laughs> So the kids have read about it, learned about it. Let's go, let's go to Nashville. And they're gonna play a team in Missouri that they've beaten. Well, they set those screens really high up at the top of the arc. Almost uh, as though they want to get Geist going downhill so he can kick it to other shooters. Wow, Jordan Barnett for three. Quiet first half. Geist spins! Wow, we got a game! Wow. Jordan Geist to the rack! Guys attacking on both ends first. Bryce Brown with his second three. And Jordan Geist makes a move we haven't seen. Splits the defenders, lays it at the rim, and the reaction from the crowd. Chan in there. Hughes leading the break. Geist lets him fly by. Big time three from Jordan Geist. Active hands defensively. Geist gets in. Now you run the floor and you spot up. Watch how patient he is to let a guy go, the defender go by. Gather yourself, nobody in his face. He has been aggressive offensively. And really his play. <laughs> Good pass. Van Leer. Got another one. Big time night for Cullen Van Leer. Most, you just stay with it. Dunnan's gambled. Missouri couldn't take advantage. Now Pernier strokes one. He's got 15. How about that rotation? Perfect. Right near Pat Adams. I don't think it was anything physical. Yeah. No, obviously something he's. And Woods now 0 of 3. 1 of 4 from the foul line. Missouri. Tatum at Christian Brothers in St. Louis. And Bruce Pearl now just trying to figure out a way that this team can quit fouling or quit getting the whistle ball. Make uh, Missouri make some shot clock at eight per year. Off balance. Got it to go. He's got 19 tonight. And that 19 year old kid looks at him like then they walk out of the huddle and say, what is he talking about? <laughs> 21 now for what a frustrating night for the Orange County native that was all set up by the play call 
Now Dunnans, everybody's smart enough. Phillips has four. You're going to attack, make a guy move his feet. And the veteran play by Dunham's is the fact that you attack a guy on the outside of their knee and make them slide. Look at that. Tough night. What a no fun, stressful season it's been. And Terrence Phillips, who's very, a very emotional player, understands that he may have played his final game for the head coach who recruited him to Columbia, Missouri. For Johnny Jones as LSU heads back to Baton Rouge with his future uncertain but seemingly written. Barnett comes up with the jam. Auburn's good enough offensive like this with Dunham. Guys are so tough off the dribble. Hard to stay in front. Missouri doesn't have the defenders that can make Auburn change. Team at Rupp earlier this season where they isolated and found mismatches that were unstoppable. Per year for three. Well, that'll help Missouri. Scores on back-to-back -back possessions. 25 for Kevin Perrier. Interesting part of Missouri, and I've heard a lot of people say buttons to push, and they did. But I'll say this. I don't think like an old Miss sitting there waiting for tomorrow night to play is afraid. Or, or they don't think they can't make the run and win this thing. Right. You know what I mean? Bunny, right? Miss the yep. layup. Now you miss one of the first of three free throws. Fourteen for Geist. So a six-point game. I think Missouri used clock. Watch Barnett as a trailer. Here's Van Leer off the curl. Whoa! We've got a one-possession game. Good set. Quick enough. Career high 16 for Van Leer. Hand in his face, coming hard. He's hit four threes tonight, make it five. Money. Catch it, a quick pass back to Purifoy. Don't get trapped. They get it to Harper. Missouri trying to catch up with him. A foul. Jordan Geist went to the hardwood and draws a foul on Harper. You be the judge. <laughs> 15 seconds left. Missouri down three. I'm kind of laughing because you could see it coming. Yes. Kim Anderson is, has a timeout, no reason to use it here and give Missouri a chance to set something up. Van Leer will inbound. He hit the last three. He's having a career night. Man, I'd go the other way. Yeah, don't have much time. 15 seconds left, a three to tie. Here's Van Leer. Barnett, who wants to take it? It's Van Leer for the tie, and it's short. Back outside. Hughes, yes! Three ball ties it with 1.8. Was that as disjointed as the entire season has been. <laughs> so it's that Purrier with the offensive rebound and the kick. Very similar to their ending at Ole Miss. And Hughes missed the last three of that one to tie it. Watch Purrier though. Get it out, get it back, deep enough. Auburn is the worst defensive rebounding team in the SEC. We just saw it may cost him. And what's tough, Tom, is when you are up three, the shot goes up. So the guards, everybody kind of goes to rebound, but that leaves guys open yeah. if there's an offensive rebound. You almost want to tell your guys, stay home like They run everybody off. But somebody back to the ball. Hughes gets his hand on it. Guys for the win. Oh, my. We've got.
Kaminga, free basketball in Music City. Unbelievable. Somebody on press row predicted overtime. Mike Kelly, the voice of the Tigers, held up a sign with about three minutes ago. And you miss a free throw or two. Auburn did. You would think energy Missouri extra period. Who's the aggressive one for Missouri on the offensive end? Probably Purrier. Gets it to Roll Hall. He's got 20. Hughes ties it up. Good ball fake by Geis. That two guys look to bounce past it inside. They didn't use it. Dunnan drives on Hughes. Can't finish. Van Leer finds it. Shot clock off. Tied at 83 as Missouri looks to extend not only its season, but their coach's career. Timeout, Kim Anderson in Missouri. 15 point. So when Geis has the ball, watch what he does when he looks inside as though he's going to pass it. There goes the defense. Freeze up Hughes. His massive shot again. End of regulation now in overtime. Corridor. Last time Missouri inbounded it deep and still got it up with 15 seconds left. Here's Geist. Geist has to be careful. Dunham has again active hands. They run out on Geist. Clock at seven. Van Leer trying to get free. Clock at four. Van Leer gives it up. Per year for the win. Oh my goodness. Kevin Perrier wins it for Mizzou, and the Tigers survive. They will check the monitor to make sure Kevin Perrier got the shot up in time. But two disjointed possessions late, and somehow Missouri still made it work. Van Leer was stuck. He had a guy backdoor cut that he could have had, but he was looking, he was looking away from the hoop. Had nowhere. What an emotional roller coaster for Kim Anderson. He was moved to near tears when Terrence Phillips fouled out. That when Perrier hit this shot to win it, he could only laugh. Wow. Tigers come back from 10 down to stun Bruce Pearl's Auburn team. They found out Sunday their coach wouldn't be returning. <laughs> and Kim Anderson, <laughs> hugged from behind by Brad Luce, did that just happen? For only the third time as the head coach of Missouri, the Tigers win away from Mizzou Arena and they do it in dramatic fashion and they extend. Thank you Tom and coach when Kevin Purrier hit the game winning shot in overtime all you could do was laugh. What was going through your mind? Well you know we, we've been in a situation maybe not exactly like that but so many times this year where our guys have had shots and they just haven't made them. And big guy tonight stepped up and I don't know how many points he had but uh, he was unbelievable. I'm so happy for him. Stepping up all night long for you, Kevin, how important was it to stay another day here and continue to play in this tournament? I mean, we just fought so much adversity this season. It's been a long season, and, and we needed this, you know. Um, God stepped up, made big shots today. You know, I had a great, uh, a good game today, and, um, you know, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. You know, we get to fight another day with Coach Anderson. Uh, you know, we, wa we wanted to send him out on a high note, and uh, that's, that's what we're, we're going to try to do. Coach, you get your dream job for one more day at least. What can you say about what these guys have done to continue to play for you? They, they played all year. I mean, you know, you and I have talked about that several times. You know, we just haven't quite been able to get over the hump. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, it's God's will tonight. I think it's uh, justice that, that we could win this game. And actually, Terrence Phillips was saying in the huddle, I don't know if you guys could hear him, we're due one. And you got one. So when you look forward to Ole Miss, what do you Ole Miss in the nightcap tomorrow night? Kim Anderson had tears in his eyes. He finished with a smile and an emotional night for this Missouri basketball program. Just an incredible finish to this game, given everything that they've been through. And it's Kevin Perrier who has a career high 30, and he hits a game winner from straight away.
Tigers erase a 10-point deficit to force overtime, and they win it to close the night at Bridgestone Arena. If the rest of the tournament is going to be like this, we're in for a heck of a week in Music City. Our final, 86-83, Mizzou wins it in overtime. Round two tomorrow, one Eastern, Tennessee, Georgia. But for now, it's up to Dari and the guys to put a bow on this thing. Play for this man anymore. Oh, but you will Thursday night, thanks to Kevin Purrier. That moment is one Kim Anderson was talking about. When Terrence came out with his fouls, the hug, I, I was sitting on the bench and I said, we're not done yet. We don't need to be doing that. So, And Coach Dilly said, yeah, we're here. We're still going to get it. These guys have been good. And, uh, uh, you know, he just told me he loved me. And, uh, you know, a bunch of these guys have, have been that way. So uh, he, finally, he finally said, hey, Coach, uh, we still got some game left. You know, because we hugged there for quite a while. I said, well, I thought you wanted to hug longer. <laughs> so, uh, 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 no, it was a special moment. I mean, everybody knows that uh, anything can happen in March. So, uh, you know, we just kept fighting, stick with the game plan, and, you know, got some stops, got some key rebounds down the stretch, hit some big shots. And Since Monday, we've just been focusing, and we've been in, the, and we said we want this game bad. For Coach A, so we want to keep going. You know, these are my brothers, and I spend almost every day with them, and I love them, uh, you know, more than anything. And I love Coach A more than anything. And Happy to be playing another day. Happy to have another day to be the coach of Mizzou. Hmm. <laughs> this was just a little while ago. He came back out after talking with his team, and some of the Missouri faithful still here. Congratulating Kim Anderson. Hard not to be really happy for him. I understand Auburn fans are upset, but hard to not be happy for Kim Anderson. First-class guy, yeah. uh, tremendous, and he never changes. Yep. The Tigers travel to Nashville for the SEC tournament and a first-round matchup with Auburn. The third meeting this season between these two Tigers was an instant classic. Fires it right side, Barnett, right wing, Purrier. Here comes a three. Captain made it. Missouri takes the 9-5 lead. Kevin Purrier's three capped a 9-0 Tiger run after they initially fell behind 5-0 to start the game. Mizzou kept the lead for much of the first half. Dumps it inside, right block, Woods flushes it, and Missouri leads by seven. That last dunk by Russell Woods, no weak side help whatsoever. Frankie Hughes gets caught in the corner on the right-hand side, and there is no Auburn players with a foot in the paint. Good show by McLemore, Geis, right side Phillips, back outside Van Leer, deep three, middle of the floor, good. In a close game, Mizzou and Auburn went back and forth to start the second half. Crossover, spinning, gets to the paint and lays it up and in on a pretty spin move. Top of the key, Purifoy, three for the lead. Made it, Auburn leads it. Phillips, left wing, Hughes, drives, cut off, right wing, Van Leer, open, three, made it. He splashed it home, and Missouri's down one. When Auburn went up by 10 with just four minutes to play, they appeared to have the game in hand. But Mizzou wouldn't quit. And down by six with just under 30 seconds to play, Mizzou showed their fans what the month of March is all about. Guys, deep three from Van Leer, nothing but bottom of the net with 16.8 to play. Gets it into Harper on the right sideline, chased by Geis, pushed off, offensive foul, it's going to go back to Missouri as Geis was able to take the charge as Harper pushed off with the left hand. Missouri with the ball, down by three with 15.2 seconds to play. Left side of the key, right side now on the wing, Van Leer a three, missed it, rebound Purrier, four to play, left wing Hughes at three, yes! made it with 1.8 to play. We're playing some more basketball. Good rebound by Kevin Purrier to keep it alive, and Frankie Hughes did the rest. Off to OT, the two Tigers win. Down by three with less than a minute and a half left, Mizzou answered the challenge again. Left corner, Hughes at three on the way. Good to tie it at 83. Frankie Hughes got a little ice in those veins right now. Missouri's got a chance to win this game. 15.3 seconds with the ball. Drives it, gets cut off on the wing, four to play. Van Leer gets tied up, top of the Purrier for the win. Bang! Missouri's heading to the second round. Kevin Purrier, a career high, 30 points, and the game winner. I mean, we just fought so much adversity this season. It's been a long season, and, and, and we needed this, you know. Um, God stepped up, made big shots today. You know, I had a great, uh, a good game today, and, um, you know, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. Now that you've had some time to digest last night's overtime win, what sticks out to you most? Oh, I just think our resolve, you know. Our guys just kept uh, plugging away. We're down with uh, 30 seconds to go, and we come back and we keep playing. Uh, and we made shots. You know, we made 16 threes, which uh, you know, there had been three or four games we'd go through and not make 16 total. So uh, 
uh, hopefully our guys got some confidence and they'll be loose tonight. You see men's tournament. A champion will be crowned, and with that, an automatic berth in the NCAA tournament. The Cinderella story, the 14th seed Missouri. With the Come back, keep their coach on the sideline for another game at least. Here's Van Leer off the curl. Whoa, we've got a one possession game. Back outside. Hughes, yes! We've got free basketball in Music City. Hughes ties it up. Van Leer gives it up. Per year for the win. Oh my goodness! Kevin Perrier wins it for Mizzou. What a ride of emotions for Kim Anderson and this Missouri team. Kevin Purrier takes the floor today after hitting the game winner last night. Two buzzer beaters for the Tigers. They're trailed by 10 Rebels in the home white. And Missouri rocking the old gold for the second straight game. He brought the energy that they needed on a consistent basis. Back cut. And reverse there for Jordan Barnett, the Texas transfer. Country. 15 points, nearly 11 rebounds, averages a double-double, and uh, just impressive to watch a kid, Barnett, with a good stroke. Looks like he's off to a contact guy. Terrence Phillips leads it short, right into the hands of Perrier. He hit the game winner from deep last night, coming off the keys yesterday in the ACC tournament. Here's the questions for Missouri when they struggle. Where do they go to get a bucket? And what kind of quality of shot can you get? A tough one, but a made one by Phillips. And it came with the shot zone here, the play zone about 30% of the time. The 1-3-1. One, one. Usually the corners are open, and Perrier continues his hot shooting. to it. He's hurt. Ball movement, Purry. We talked about it last night. Gets his feet set. Van Leer hit five of seven from deep, including one with 16 seconds left. It made it a one possession game. Drive by Walton and a finish. Quick off the dribble. His stroke pretty effective. Skip pass is usually open, but you got to turn and face and see the bucket. Good pass. Hughes. Yes, against the zone. As he, as he missed both free throws, 74% free throw shoot. Per year, jump hook with the left hand. That's his strong side. He's Missouri's big guy. Surprised Phillips didn't keep the dribble with the big guy guarded. Oh, nice pass. Walton with the jam. Great cut by Walton from the weak side. Offensive end for Missouri. Frankie Hughes with the assist. K.J. Walton with a high percentage look. And Cinderella still in this thing. Four-point Ole Miss lead. By a guy, and then you shoot it off one leg and hobble back to the other end. There's Phillips South, the stagger. His second three. The clock. Guys. Wow. wow. Tough shot. Solid defense. Up 11. Nothing's going right. You know, just. You're trying to come on. Burrier knocks him. He went to Oak Hill Academy. 88 and 4 over two years at Oak Hill. Apologies to the officials. Phillips started all 31 games last season. I felt like a Taylor. <laughs> Walton with the putback. Did he not know it? I mean, did he? Terrence Phillips said, you know, he'll be here tomorrow. Travis Ford played one year at Missouri for Norm Stewart. 10 point lead, a heave early. Looked like Burnett could have gotten a little bit deeper. The lead is 10 at the break. Ole Miss in the first half hit 7 of 13. Russell Woods rolls it home. First bucket of the night for the senior from Chicago. And you didn't even mention Saez. I mean, of course, he's their best player on both ends of the floor. Hughes with a big three. So the question that Andy Kennedy's kind of asked of his defensive rebound, Bucket. Whoa! Mm. There's Perrier with the jam. Head coach. From 1926 to 1999, four coaches. Has set the program. The next guy coming in will have a good starting block. Fans haven't seen what this program is capable of. Look how they finished their run in the Big 12. Four NCAA tournaments, two 30-win seasons, and averaging 27 wins a year. Not one, you can't take one guy away and nope. expect to nope. affect them. Mike Anderson basketball, they're deep. They've got enough bodies that can beat you. They'll continue to come after you. I think with the run out. And Phillips. 
clean look for Kevin Perrier. Something else for the committee to consider. How different is a team is Georgia with Yancey Mate? First figures rebounding. That is item number one on a scouting report, right? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to block him out. As confused as Sean Farnham on the dance floor of a honky tonk. Terrence Phillips for three. Well, let's see if Mizzou has one run. That's from deep. Wow, look at that rebound. Elevated, and Burnett, Barnett, excuse me, has 13 now. Missouri. Ben Both teams about the same from a field goal percentage perspective, but Ole Miss has been to the free throw line for Missouri. Makes him use clock. For deep shot from Baylor. You know when you match up with Ole Miss, they'll come at you. They'll play you hard, they'll play you physical, they'll play you tough. Good steal by Barnett to lay it in. I mean, that's the fifth for Terrence Phillips. He gave a hug to Kim Anderson when he fouled out last night. Told him he loved him. <laughs> and they share a smile here. I asked Terrence before the game, I said, did you know you're going to make your coach cry? And he said, come on. Van Leer free for three. He's into double figures for the second consecutive win with Ole Miss and Arkansas. Andy Kennedy shakes hands with Kim Anderson. It's a 20-win season for Ole Miss, and it's an end of an era for Missouri. In our last outing in the pavilion, they made a rush back because they're good shooters and they don't quit. I, I, I want to tip my hat to Kim Anderson and, and his kids because they battled all year. CC now, and we'll see you again tomorrow from Music City. From Vanderbilt here for Florida, Ole Miss, Arkansas. You've got underdogs with chances at big-time upsets. Kim Anderson after the game. I just told him, hey, uh, how much you know I enjoyed coaching him, how proud I was of him. Uh, you know, we didn't win enough games. And uh, that obviously, when that happens, the coach gets asked to uh, take his ball and go home. And that's what's happened. If you were to ask me, when did you know you were going to get fired? I, I would have said probably the first day I took the job. Because there was a lot of challenge that had, challenges that had to be met. And, and uh, we, met, we met them and we did a pretty good job, but we just didn't win enough games. That was Kim Anderson right after uh, Missouri lost to Ole Miss and his tenure at Missouri is over. He's, I tell you, man, there are a lot of likable coaches in this conference, and he's right up there near the top. And that's, he's very honest. He's not hiding anything. There's no question. What I, what I love in, in what he said was he's teaching these young men about real life. That's one of the greatest things that I got from basketball his players. Yeah. This is real life, fellas. This is what you're going to see when you go in the real world. Coach Kim Anderson, first class, taught us what we've heard so many times. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% on how you react to it. He is a perfect example of mm. that and displayed that to his team. But the most important thing that he showed to his players was love. The only way you get through life, you have to love people, and he showed so much love on that court to the guys, and they gave it back to him 100% yeah. every night. All you got to do is watch him for five minutes and you see how much the players love him right back.